Good evening, parents, and welcome to ONW's Open House for the 2014-15 school year. This short video presentation is very much like the recorded video presentations that I will be creating for your students throughout the year. As I'm sure you are well aware, the Olathe School District has implemented BYOD in all the high schools. BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. In addition, my classroom is part of a technology pilot in the district. As part of this pilot, my class will have the added advantage of the use of Microsoft Surface Pro 2 tablets in class. In this video, I want to share with you how assignments will be handed out, as well as how deadlines, exam dates, and reminders will be communicated. So to start with, Edmodo. Edmodo is how students access their assignments and how due dates and reminders will be communicated. Edmodo is very similar in its interface to Facebook. So any of you out there who are familiar with Facebook, you will find Edmodo to be very accessible. So I have created an account uh, for an imaginary student named Raven Lavoie. And I use that to show students what their account should look like as we um, use the different aspects of it. So here on Raven LaVoy's homepage, she'll have her groups over here to the left. Um, so any teachers that are using Edmodo will appear here. So I click on Mrs. LaVoy English 1 for 2014 and 15. And then I have two categories here at the left, posts and folders. Now, group posts is where I will communicate those exam dates, the due dates, the reminders, etc. They will appear here just like they would on Facebook. And there, then there are notifications that will appear up here just like they do on Facebook. Now, the folders feature is how I will deliver different assignments to students. If you look here, I have three folders so far folders will be added throughout the year. Our first story of the year is the necklace. And when you click on that folder, you can see that there right now are four assignments. Um, and while they don't appear in order, they are numbered in the order in which I wish the students to complete them. So first we have a goal sheet. That's number one, the necklace goal sheet. Then we have vocab for the necklace. That's number two. Then they would move on to number three, the necklace lit turn notes, and number four, the necklace reading guide. Um, videos like this one will very often be embedded within those sheets. So if I show you an example of the necklace vocab, and I'll click on it here. And with the necklace vocab, of course, part one says open the vocab presentation using the following link. So uh, they would double click on that link. And here it takes them to a video on YouTube. All the videos are private access videos. So people who do not have the link can't just look up these videos on um, YouTube. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, there's another link for further practice. This is a link that takes them to what's called Quizlet. And here they can practice with just regular flashcards. Um, there are learning games that they can do. There's a speller. There's some more um, enrichment games where they can scatter the cards and match them. And then there's another one with the race, etc. But there will be lots of little things like this these online features, these technology features that should be accessible regardless of the device that students have at home. I try and keep all of our technology, which is one of the reasons why I'm using Google Drive instead of Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office. Um, Google Drive is free. Microsoft Office costs upwards of $600. And um, Google Drive is not tied to a device, whereas uh, the Microsoft package is tied to a particular computer. Now, going back to the folders, uh, there is a folder here at the top, the class procedures and how-tos. And this 
uh, folder will always contain lots of little videos that explain how to set up or use different aspects of the technology that I want the kids to use as we uh, learn. And so um, this how-to folder I'm sure will be a very good or a frequently used folder, I should say. You can see here I've got the syllabus, I've got a beginning of the year questionnaire that I wanted the kids to fill out so that I could get to know them better and find out their technology uh, needs or situation at home. We've got one for how to create a turnitin.com account, how to activate the online textbook, how to connect Google Drive to Edmodo, etc, etc. As we incorporate new technology throughout the year, new how-to's will be added. So this folder really is a first, first line of defense, I should say. When the kids have something that they don't understand, or they're not sure how to do it, they can check here first. And if there are other obstacles that present themselves that are not addressed here, of course, they can communicate with me via email, uh, via Edmodo, and of course, the old-fashioned way, ask me in class. So, okay, so Parent View is another new feature this year, in addition to the Bring Your Own Device. It replaces Parent Access. And it also may be used to communicate due dates and reminders, but I want you to keep in mind that Parent View is new to me too, so I may not use it as much as Edmodo. I kind of experimented with it this past week, uh, sending out a reminder for the syllabus. I posted a copy of the syllabus there. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Turnitin.com, uh, that is where you can see uh, the, or excuse me, with turnitin.com, there is a video on how to set that up on the class procedures and how to's folder on Edmodo. Um, as we get closer to turning in an assignment using turnitin.com, um, there will be another how to video, how to turn things in on turnitin.com. Uh, turnitin.com is a plagiarism detector. And I believe that its use is vital to maintaining academic integrity here at Olathe Northwest. Okay, so all of these accounts are going to have passwords. And I have asked students to write their usernames and passwords on page 167 of their planners. Um, so far we have done the following online accounts. We've done Edmodo, Turnitin.com, Google Drive, the McDougal Littell online textbook, and of course the Wi-Fi network here at school. I've encouraged the students to use the same username and password across the accounts where possible. Uh, however, the Wi-Fi network at school is the one that has a specific sequence of letters and numbers. It's the last three digits of their school ID, their first, middle, and last initials, and then the two digits of their birth date and that's their login for school and then I believe it's every 90 days that they are required to change their password. So the one place where Edmodo is different from Facebook is that it has a parent access feature. So if I were to show you here what it looks like, if you type in olathaschools.edmodo.com up here in the search box, there is a page that pops up that looks like this. And so you can see down here at the bottom where we've got the two blue boxes, I'm a teacher, I'm a student. Underneath that, in blue letters, we've got I'm a parent. So you would click on I'm a parent, and then you have to type in a parent code. Every student has his or her own parent code that I have to provide to you. And so uh, if you would like that parent code, I ask that on the sign-up sheets that have been placed around the room during the course of this video, and there are five, um, please indicate on that sheet by circling uh, the appropriate uh, word, which is code, and you should receive an email from me with the code by the end of this week. The sign-up sheets that are placed around the room look like 
um, this sheet right here. And so if you could just circle code right there, and I'll be sure to include the code. Also, as we're getting down to the end of this presentation, if you would like to see this video again, the URL can be included in the email with the Edmodo parent code. I just ask that on this sign-up sheet here, if you would circle video as well. So, thank you, and here's to a great school year.